Hi and welcome everybody. My name is Sandra Staub and today we are going live once again with Vectornator. I'm very happy that you joined us today and what we're going to do is we are going to um, this sketch, we're going to do this in vectors and I'm just going to take you through like really all the steps that I usually do and you can ask all the questions that you have life about my workflow about my tools that i'm using i don't know any questions that you have on your mind so i'm really looking forward to these and i hope that you're enjoying this live session so let's jump right in um, as i told you this is my sketch that i have prepared and um, this will be the final version and sometimes you know things in vectors even though i enjoy working both in pixel based and vector based softwares so sometimes when I need like something on a bigger scale, it's just easier to have it right away in vectors. So I just wanted to show you this very quickly, like so you know what we're going to work towards. But we're going to work um, with this sketch. So let's get started. Here, I have already prepared my canvas. As you can see, I usually work with 44 by 55 centimeters because that's pretty big. Um, I can already create art prints from that, so that's pretty great. Um, and I usually get started with importing my sketch. So let's get that first. Here it is, in case you didn't see it, here it's on the plus tab. So here's my sketch now. I then lock that very quickly. I'm not gonna take you through the whole renaming the canvas thing because I usually do that. I'm a little bit, you know, like nitty gritty with that, but let's just, let's just get this started. So then I go on the plus side, I add a new layer and um, I'll just basically start drawing the first thing that I feel drawn to. So today let's start with something simple. Let's start with the um, shape in the background. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click and select the circle tool and I'm turning on the fill option if it would let me let me see okay so here i'm going to jump uh, in the opacity to something like 55 so i can see what's underneath i'm just going to quickly test yeah here we go that's perfect so fill is turned on now i'm just gonna swap this to the color that i want and then i can start placing the circle exactly where I want it. Now I do not want to have a border so I just turn this toggle this option off very quickly and I'm just going to add super simple a square or well rectangle in a case. Toggle off the fill again and since this is on the oh no this I didn't want here, since this is on the same um, layer, I'm just going to select them both. And then quickly here in the path, I select this Boolean option, combine. And I have my first shape already done. Super quick, right? Okay, from here, um, I tend to go on and like continue locking the, um, the layers and then add new ones for every single um element that i'm drawing because then what i just did by like selecting the circle and the square or the, the rectangle was like super easy to like i can just select these to convert them into a shape change the color whatever so it just makes my life easier so i like to use um like lots of different um layers all right now i'm gonna go ahead and let's start with something organic let's do her hair because i really like that um, because I, I use usually the pencil tool for that. So here you can see this on my left hand side or like on the left side of the screen. And um, I usually use like a pretty high flow, like something like around 90 or higher because I just, you know, I don't want this to be too wiggly. So this, for example, is it's already a little bit too too wiggly. I want it even softer. So if I do something like that, then it, you know, it becomes a little bit softer. It's quite, quite refined though. So maybe I'm going to go even higher. 
yeah it still it still makes these kind of like little bumps but that's okay um so again i'm gonna i want the hair to be white so i'm just gonna click here on white color and then the stroke is off and then i'm just gonna draw alongside this wiggly line of hair there you go that's pretty much there is and for the rest i'm just drawing alongside the face her shoulders and just bring it all together and in the end i got a little bit wobbly down here as you can see i can just easily straighten this out by deleting these knots no biggie whatsoever and then double click here i don't want this uh, bezier that i just made disappear and yeah now i can go a little bit into the fine tuning I'm, I'm not going to do too much of that though, so we can move along a little bit quicker and I really have, so I can make sure also that I have enough time to answer your questions that you have. So yeah, if anything comes up, if I was, if I went too fast in some step or something, take this opportunity and ask me about it because that's what I'm here for. And uh, see, I'm getting a little bit detailed already about this ear curve. Um, so yeah, um, just jump right in with the questions if you have any. I'm really looking forward to them. All right, so let's just make sure that here it looks kind of okay, because if not, it's going to be a bit weird if the hair doesn't line up. And now again, I can't see what's on my sketch underneath. So that's why I usually put my layers into a little bit of a transparency. And now I can see what's underneath it. And I can just very easily adjust my vectors as I please. All right, here we go. Yeah, I think that's... That's pretty okay. Um, so maybe what you can see me doing right now is, so I double click in order to get the Bezier's and if I want to like move one around, so if I just hold one and move it around, um, the other one is also affected by it. So if I don't want that, if I just want to move this one that I have selected, so I could just um, get the other one on the opposite side in the correct pose and then I just tap on the, um, on the screen and then I can move the other one individually. So it took me a while to figure that out too. So, um, yeah, I was so happy when I realized that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to get my, um, nods into the right position here. I made a little bit of a, of a mess and you can see like there are two, um, two shapes overlying overlaying but i don't really care about that because as i mentioned before because the layer on the bottom is in um is locked and it's on this content is on a different layer so i can just select everything and then once again go to the boolean options and that are down here and then just boop, merge them together and now I just have one shape, so I can just draw different amount of shapes and then, you know, like fix it later, whatever I need to be fixed. So I'm just gonna place that somewhat into the right um, area so we can move on to the more complex stuff. All right, let's say I'm mostly happy, not happy with the hair, but yeah, getting close. Oh yeah, that's much better, right? And okay. Try not to be a perfectionist here. All right, let's move on. Um, okay, new layer as always. And now we're just gonna, 
I don't know. Let's get started with the hand because it just, I feel like it. Um, again, I'm going to lock the one underneath. I keep them all in a transparency for now, but I'm going to turn them all into 100% opacity again once I'm done with all the um, redrawing of the shapes. Because, I mean, if I would go into 100% uh, opacity right now, then I wouldn't see um, the what is underneath the sketch. So I don't want that. So for this, I'm actually going to select the pen tool. And I'm going to, no, I don't want this to be a stroke. I want this to be in fill in this lovely darker skin color that I have. And then, um, ooh, brilliant. Layer is locked. See, I jumped onto the wrong layer. Okay, so now I'm just gonna, because this is a fairly geometric shape, I really don't need the, um, this organic flow of the pencil tool. So this is why I'm using the pen tool here. And yeah, ran into the same problem again. I forgot to put it in transparency. Ooh, 55 would be better than 555. And I just pick it up here and just get back into the normal flow yeah and then remember tapping on the screen to just move one bezier at a time i don't know why they call bezier if anybody knows that then let me know I'm really curious about that um so yep just redrawing this shape and you can see yeah this so those are mostly like straight curves so, um, straight lines, sorry. So it's, it's pretty easy. So for now, I just, I just drew the, the hand and I'm going to go into the details later um, to make them look like, like the, the fingers are separated and everything. So for now, I'm just redrawing the shapes. And since we're already on the a lovely, like darker pinkish reddish color, I'm just going to go ahead and draw her face as well and her, just her body. So again, new layer. I'm going to start naming them though, because this is going to confuse me later. I wanted to kind of like make this a little bit quicker for you. Um, but yeah. Okay. Hi, Miriam from Israel. So happy you could join us. That's amazing. I don't really know what time it is over there, but um, I hope it's not too late for you. And um, what tool I use the most in Vectornator asks Julia. Thank you for your question. Um, so yeah, I use a lot of the pen tool that we're just using right now and the pencil tool. It kind of depends on which um, what I'm, what I want to use them for, kind of like what kind of um, shape I'm working on, because for more organic shapes, we're gonna go to, we're gonna get to them in a minute. Um, for these, okay, so I'm, it's just the other way around. I'm sorry, but I'm just gonna show you. So these um, leafy shapes, for example, I love drawing them with, uh, with the pen, pen tool. No, that's the pencil tool. Um, yeah, it's a pencil tool because yeah, I can just basically redraw them uh, organically and just leave them like that and not really do anything more about it. And for the ones that are a little bit more geometric and need a little bit more attention to detail um, or have like straighter lines, for those I prefer to use the pen tool. And then because I have a lot of like geometric elements in my ske uh, sketches and illustrations usually, um, I just work with the, with the selection here that you see on the left of the screen, oh, like the square, the circle. I have never used the star. Maybe I should start using the star or the swirl or something like that. Yeah, so um, those are like my, my go-to uh, tools for drawing. And then I've noticed that I really do use a lot of Boolean because I'm just, I don't know, I'm a little bit of a need freak. So I just really like to bring all these last little shapes that are out there together and um, make them part of something bigger. Oh my god, that was so cheesy. <laughs> Please forgive me. <laughs> All right. Okay, so 
Look, the fourth, the fourth layer. Oh, now I got it. I was like, okay, what is this? Yeah, okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, okay, I needed to lock the fourth layer. See, I got all like distracted and stuff. Okay, so now I'm just gonna redraw this quickly. See, it's, it's just, sometimes it's like even faster to do this with the pen tool. Sometimes I just use the pencil tool, honestly, because I'm a little bit too lazy to, you know, like, like do all these Bezier things and it's just like, oh. Um, and I'm actually gonna be super lazy and I'm just gonna do that and close this um, shape right off here because I'm just gonna shove it underneath the hair and then you will not notice um, that this little part between her neck um, is actually not drawn exactly the way it should be. Okay, if I can get to move this, this is like, um, I think I'm just a little bit too clumsy here to like, come on. <laughs> is this because it's stuck? No, it's not. Okay, I'm having trouble moving it. Okay, now I got it. So, so I just shoved it underneath the um, hair layer and you can see, okay, I'm just gonna hair, see. Um, so if I'm going to turn this on to 100% opacity, then you can see that even though I was lazy and I didn't draw the rest of the shape, I just, it's, it's not visible. So yeah, I just saved myself some time there. All right. Right. So now we have uh, the basic shape of the, uh, of the body, of the hand. Let's just do a bunch of like of these other shapes and then go back to the face. So you can see also how I do the details because I can imagine like the circle over here, you can pretty much imagine how to do that, hopefully. Um, so I wanna show you like some, some more fun stuff. Okay, I'm gonna read in this one as well, just quickly the hand because I'm gonna get confused about this later. I just know it. It's... Okay, so now everything is locked. Thank you, Miriam, for pointing that out. Okay, then we're just gonna add here. It's like, what's that? It's like a cup. So this was actually an originally, um, I made this illustration for a challenge on Instagram. A challenge with, with a couple of um, illustrators that I'm friends with, and it was about tea. And so this is why you see like cups in there. Okay, so what I did, is um, I just drew a circle and you can see it's a little bit too big for my for this cup that I have here on my sketch so I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller put it in place and then I'm just gonna delete this knot on top here or maybe not no this oh will I let's see I don't want it to split up though. I just wanted to, you know, just like go away so then I can like put them all together. But okay, Vectornator doesn't let me do what I want to do right now. So I'm just going to fake it. And so I just, yeah, it deleted the knot up there, but it opened up my path, which I didn't want. I actually want to just delete and then, you know, not to open up the path. But I just reconnected it very quickly with the pen tool, um, the lines. So in case you didn't see, I'm just going to quickly go back. So up here, I deleted the knot of this. And then, yeah, it opened up my path. I don't know. Normally it lets me do that. But Maybe today it's just like, hey, we're live. So, you know, I'm just going to do something. I don't know. And then, yeah, I, I picked the pen tool and I connected the two um, knots again. And then I get this like little curve here on the right side. And what I'm going to do is just I double click on the uh, upper Bezier and now it's flat. So that's how I did this shape. And then I'm just going to do this little, I don't know what they're called in English. They're like, they have the funniest names, those things. So. I think in Spanish it's like orillas, so it's like ear. So yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Lots of Spanish speaking people here, so I don't wanna, um, yeah, say something wrong. Okay, so what I'm going to do here now with these is, uh, I also want to make these two things um, part of a group because I don't know, I'm just in a, in a very, um, union mood today so 
Let me see where the group is because I keep like looking for that and then, okay, here it is. See, so it's in uh, a range and then I just click on group and now this cute little cup is just, is a group and I can just select it on its own. So what I'm going to do is on the left side, I'm going to select copy here and I'm just taking this cup, move it around and I have a exact copy of it. I'm going to toggle it off and now I'm just going to flip it and rotate it in place. That's about here, I guess. And then I can do the same thing again. And um, I'm just going to get to your questions in one second. Okay, here we go. And since these are so like super simple shapes, I didn't really need to put this layer in transparency. All right. Um, so how do I come up with my color palette? Um, I, so yeah, it's, um, I started actually with this color palette a while back when, um, while I'm talking, I'm just going to draw this thing. So, you know, you continue seeing me stuff, see, do me, st see me doing stuff. Um, so yeah, I started with this color palette a while back. It was actually inspired by my master thesis and, um, uh, I just expanded it a little bit over time and I started basically off with a pale pink, um, shade and then I was like, okay, what well, goes very well with pale pink? And I was like, okay, dark blue goes really well or like indigo or yeah. Um, and then gray to kind of like neutralize it. And then, um, this color that you're seeing here, that is the, this like huge geometric shape in the back. We can call it window if you want. Um, that color is in a color that I call electric coral. And eventually after like making so and so many illustrations i just felt the need of like introducing a little bit more of a vibrant color into all of this um so that's when that happened um there is also like a um like a, i have like a more intense um purple and blue and then i also introduced the turquoise but you're not going to see that very often in my in my illustrations because i just keep using the same colors because um, I can, I can make illustrations in all kinds of colors. So it's not really, you know, it's, um, I think clients or people who are interested to work with you, they understand that you can just switch to a, to a color palette. Um, but it gives my illustrations like a very distinct vibe immediately. So that's why I stick to the same color palette. And then um, as for the different elements or so, I just decide a little bit out of experience and out from the guts, like which color I wanna assign to what. So for example, I know that this darker hue for the body that I'm using here or for the skin tone looks really nice on both a darker background. Like in this case, we have this, uh, dark indigo color as well as on a brighter black background like um, sometimes I use a gray background so yeah it's a little bit of a mix of both all right um, the double click on the nod if that makes it right instead of a curve yes so I'm just gonna show you very quickly Miriam um, I can actually show you perfectly on this one. So I have to, um, I have the note here. I can double click once to get these Bezier's out that I can just move around and modify. And if I actually want the line to be straight, I just double click on it again and then it's straight again. So you, you can go back and forth. If you like, if you have like a messed up line or something and you just want to quickly fix it, you want it to be straight, you can just double click on it. Or if you have a straight line and you need the Bezier's to, um, to work with, then you double click and you, you can start from there. All right. Um, then, okay. I wanna move on with the face so you get to see something cool in before our time runs out and see now this is what happens so now i have um i didn't name my layers and now i'm confused what is what what is what uh so here's the body and 
The pen tool. There is another question about the pen tool. Very good. I'm just going to check this out very quickly. Use the pen tool, but how long did it take you to learn it? I'm so good. Okay. Um, so, okay, I'm going to be honest. Um, I I think this was a totally um, intentional from Vectornator that they um, kind of like used similar gestures or similar um, commandos from Illustrator. So I have a background in being a graphic designer and I was pretty familiar with the um, with Illustrator when I started working with Vectornator. So it was kind of like, it was, it was, oops, see, that's what happens when I talk and do stuff at the same time. Um, so I already kind of like knew like what does what. Um, and then from there, I just like built on that knowledge and got more familiarized with the like, um, distinctions in, in Vectornator and stuff like that. So um, I think actually the pen tool is fairly easy to use. Um, and it's actually, it's also in Photoshop. So um, it's just more precise, I think. Like if you want to um, like separate a photo from the background or something, I also work with the pen tool because I just think it's way more precise. But since we're talking about this right now, um, yeah. So it's just, it's basically just tap at the, at the corner of a shape um, that you want to draw. And then you just go to the next like point where you need it. So here's probably like around here. And then this piece here, this is all kind of like a straight line. So I don't have to add like more knots to them. So I can just go to the next point before I, I will have a curve. And then, you know, here I start curving. And yeah, that's a little bit of experience to know like where I can curve or like add the curves. And I think this was too much. So I'm just picking this up. I'm also going to put this again back in like 55 transparency. So. So I'm just going to I'm just going to bring in a little bit of like a squiggly line in here. And I just move on, like tap where like, the node is supposed to be. And I encourage you to just try and do the same. Like take a, start with something simple, you know, like start with, with uh, something that has like a lot of geometric shapes or something in there, um, or is based on geometric shapes. And then, you know, just like redraw little by little and I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to get the hang of it very quickly because it's there's not much science to this to be honest it's just um yeah it's just uh i don't know <laughs> it's pretty straightforward i think it's like uh okay so um i have one side of the eyelashes i was in the mood to my like I don't know, like fiery eyelashes or something. Um, I saw them once on an Instagram filter and I was like, ooh, how cool would it be if I had like fiery eyelashes? So sometimes my characters get fiery eyelashes because they look so cool. Um, and I actually don't really like how they end being so, like the endings are like super, super pointy. So I'm just gonna select it and I'm gonna add uh, the stroke again but I'm just gonna make it softer for like one point. Yeah. And I'll make it the same color than the fill. So I think it was this one. No, it was this one. So now you can see that the point, the, the, um, the endings, like the points, they are not so sharp anymore and it just looks a little bit softer. So I don't know. I mean, this is like really, really in detail already, but I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. So yeah, I do that sometimes. All right, let's move on with the eye. And what I also wanted to tell you is, um, what I usually do is I just draw one side of the face because I'm like a big sucker for symmetry. Um, so what I'm doing is I just, um, I just draw the half of it and then I just copy it and flip it to the other side. And by that I save myself a lot of time. So um, that's what I'm going to do. And as you can see, I still had like my copy function on. So this is why I created a copy of the eye. And if you want to shape a, um, like 
scale a shape um, in a proportionate way. I mean, if I'm just gonna, you know, like select one of the corners and just move them around, then I'm not gonna have a, um, it's not scaling on unpropor uh, proportionally. So if I want to scale the eye a little bit propor like proportionate, so that's, it remains a circle, I just select the corner and I tap one finger on the screen. So, you know, like even if I'm like moving around, like, ooh, I want this bigger, it's like, oops, forgot to tap. I tap and bam, there it is. So keep that in mind. Okay, um, what's next? Okay, so let's do the eyebrow as well. And then we can do this again with the um, pen tool. And you can see I just use two uh, nods, no more. And then I really like the, like the endings to be round, the caps. So I just changed that here quickly, if you couldn't see it here in the settings of the stroke. And there we go. As simple as that. And okay, let's continue. Then my noses, I don't know, I just like to add like these little ovals here to my noses. And those are also really good references afterwards when I want to copy um, the other, like the half of the face to the other half. You will see in a minute what I mean with that. Let me check the time. Okay, now we still have a little bit of time, good. Because if not, I would have just jumped ahead and explained this to you, but now you will have to hang around until the end to find out. <laughs> okay. Um, I messed up this shape a little bit. So. But um, here we go. And so for this line of the nose, you can use either the pen tool, which would be just like tap, tap. That works or you can also use the line tool here which is just um yeah you just draw it pretty much and in order to make it um what's that like exactly vertical i also hold down one finger onto the canvas so you can see it like snaps to 45 degrees angle which is super neat right because this saves me so much time and yeah like really really big on like like having everything aligned perfectly so knowing these kind of little tricks are super helpful okay let's give her a little bit of a cheek here as well although i might maneuver myself into a little bit of a problem there if i have to like mask this afterwards let's see Okay, so she just gets like a, a bit of a roundy cheek for now and I'm gonna make this clip to the face later. And uh, let's give her lips. And as I told you, like I'm just gonna work from the middle here. So I'm not gonna draw the whole, um, the entirety of the lips, but just from the middle onwards. And here as well okay making this a little bit yeah that's okay and okay so i have her face now this is pretty much i mean i can add like some cute little details and stuff if i want to like okay now I just want to, oh, didn't pick this up. Okay, I want to pick up this um, node. Well, it doesn't let me. Okay. Never mind then. I'm just gonna draw the rest of the ear as a separate um, curve then. Okay, and oh yeah, I could also add the earrings. I think that's gonna be helpful. Um, I'm going to change this quickly though into different color because that's going to be a different color. And then the earrings, I'm just going to draw them in quickly as well in a, um, in the same color as the other ones. 
and I'm just gonna put them in place something like that and well they go through the ear right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna here um, I'm gonna add a node around here where um, where the ear lobe stops or starts and then I'm gonna add another one um, up here and now with the scissors tool I can select this one delete it and then the path opens up and it looks kind of like you know the earring goes like into the ear and out of it again but I actually that was not the right way to um, an earring is supposed to go through the ear so um, it actually starts from usually like from this side and then you know goes out the other side so I need to add it actually on the other side okay and so now I didn't add the scissors tool. Okay, so I'm just gonna add another one because this is kind of like the one that I'm deleting and on the other two nodes is like where it starts and stop the, stops the opening of this node, right? So here we go. Now is that. Okay, and as I mentioned before, I'm just doing half the face and then I select it all. Here on the left side, I just go to copy and then I just copy everything. Hold one finger down as always. So it's going to like copy in a vertical um, direction. Then I deselect copy because if I'm going to move it around some more, then it's just going to create more and more copies and I don't want that. Um, then here in the, uh, in the style tab, I'm just going to flip it. And what I said before about um, the nose or this like little ring on, around the nose tip is a good guide is this is what I meant by it. So I'm just picking it up, hold one finger down again. And now I can just place this part exactly over the part where the nose has already been. Like, you know, you can see like this little curve or the circle and I just place it right on top of that and I have the other side of her face. So this way I just made it super quick and easy for myself. And now I can go into like deleting the elements that are um, double if I want that, but you can also just, you know, leave them out and that's okay too. Okay, now I'm gonna need a, um, like this little curve around the chin. So she actually, has a chin if not it would look a little bit weird if you don't want that so that's just going to be a line and i'm actually going to make this a darker color so i have like a little bit more like complexity in the face and not just you know like a plain all the same color that kind of like adds to um yeah like a it just gives gives like a little bit more of a like a intentional and deeper feel which is something i like so here um again it's like fairly geometric so i'm using the pen tool again i'm just going to redraw this little division and that's going to be the distinction between the shoulder and the rest of the body and then i can add this here as well and i can you know i can always fix the hair later if i want to and i can add here this little drop which is like one of the elements that i really like adding to my illustrations i just like the shape of it so I'm not sure there's like any deeper meaning i mean yeah i love water who doesn't um i can also like oops that's what happens when you select with the um like node selection tool is that node tool see yeah okay i could just click and like cheat off the names um, yeah, so I just wanted to select all of this because I want to change the stroke color to this like darker blue. So it's like, it's going to be a little bit more visible and I did the same here and for the eyes as well. That's, I'm just going to do that one-on-one -on -one because, um, that's why I like having everything like on different uh, layers because then I can just easily select and deselect. Um, okay, I'm, what I'm going to do though is like I'm going to make a little bit of like a 
an extra shape for the eyelid. So it like kind of like defines the eyelid a little bit more. And I accidentally um, made the stroke much thicker than I wanted to. I didn't, I didn't intend to do that. Okay, so that I'm just gonna place over this, over this like super cool, like fiery eyelashes. And I'm going to adjust um, this a little bit. So again, with a double tapping, and I'm just gonna try and lay it over the eyelashes so they're like perfectly covered up once I put them again into 100% transparency. And I will also want to bring the eyelashes themselves actually forward. So this is really good that we did that because now I can show you how I do that. So because I draw, I drew the pupil after drawing the eyelashes. Now if I'm going to put this layer into 100% transparency, what's going to happen is the following. You will still see the pupils and I don't want that. So what I want is I want the eyelashes and this like line that I just created for the lid to be on top of the pupil. So I just gonna go here in style and in arrange, I can just bring this forward. And now it's covering up the uh, pupil and I don't have to recreate the whole um, shape and everything. So that's super neat. So um, I'm just gonna take all of this again, copy it, switch it over to this side, flip it, turn off copying because I don't want further copies of this and then just place it where it's supposed to be. So here we go. Okay, now I can have some more fun with, um, with her face. I can like add some more details if I want that. Um, for example, I could fill out the lips. Let's do that. And for that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the, yeah, the pencil tool again for that, because then you can see, I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna redraw it in this color and that's it. It's actually not the same color. It was almost the same color. So I'm just gonna change it quickly and I don't like I don't do anything else you know it's like super messy and everything but I just you know it's, it's enough it's you know it's covered up it's all good so that works and then I can I can give her like a little bit of like a crazy lip um, lipstick something let's like make this like squarey weird and fun and I don't know I think makeup artists do the coolest stuff sometimes right so that's definitely like if i see like super crazy makeup where like people kind of like look like parrots i'm like ooh, yeah this is cool um so what i'm going to do is i just created this shape i'm moving it up and i want this below what i already have of the lips so i'm just gonna select this and then bring it to the back and that's it. Now she has like super cool makeup, I think. I don't know. It's a question of taste. All right. Um, I have actually, so there's a question about if I always have been a digital artist. And um, it's a very funny story because I was like a huge technophobe at a time um, where I was like, oh, God, no, oh, you know, like, oh, smartphones and all this stuff. It took me like forever to get a, a smartphone. So. I think my first smartphone was an iPhone 3 or 4 and I was already using it like five or six years after it came out. So it's like super late to the whole like technology and smartphone game and everything. Um, and I did not, I did definitely not um, see myself as a digital artist because I was like, oh, analog is so great and oh, it's so beautiful and everything. Not that it's not, it definitely is. Um, but yeah, I was kind of like standing in my own way a little bit there. Um, so I just created quickly a new layer just so you have some background because I want this um, hand uh, lines. I want them on the, on a different uh, layer so I can easy, more easily fix them. Um, so yeah, then I 
at some point I kind of like gave in, I don't know. I mean, now it's like looking back, it was like the best thing I could ever possibly do. Uh, and I acquired an iPad and oh my God, it was such a game changer. I just so loved it. And I realized like, oh my God, I was like drawing so much more. Like before I was like doing everything in my sketchbook. And then, you know, I was like just drawing like occasionally and I always felt bad for not drawing so often. And yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I got an iPad and I was like so hooked and I could like make all the changes that would took me forever, um, take me forever in, uh, in an analog drawing. And then I suddenly saw like the possibility of actually doing this for clients because I wanted to be an illustrator since, I don't know, since I'm 19 years old or so, like so forever. Um, and um, it was just so hard to like make these beautiful illustrations that, you know, they take you a while to make them. And, um, and then you have like changes, you know, you have to be kind of like for the market, you have to be kind of like easily, like quick in making changes. So it was just very hard to, um, to make this feasible as like an economic system or like, yeah, and make changes that don't take you forever to make. Um, so yeah, once I was started working in, in, a, in a digital media, it was just so much easier to make all these changes. And then I was like, okay, yeah, maybe I, I can actually do this um, as a, a full-time career. And that actually changed my path of employment because then I became an illustrator and uh, because I'm formerly trained graphic designer. So yeah, because of these like problems with the changes I uh, I was working as a graphic designer even though I always had the passion to be or wanted to become an illustrator um, and then yeah thanks to the iPad and the digital illustrations I was able to actually um, make this my full-time job so what I just did is I just drew quickly two strains like in her face so to make this like a little bit more fancy looking I guess um, and um, so next question do you design your compositions like these elements you placed around was there a particular thinking yes so this was for uh, a Instagram challenge that was called cups and oh no it's a tea, tea, tea tober we called it and this prompt was cups and saucers so it was like yeah you know and tea and you know you had like cups and everything so i was like okay i need to draw something with uh, cups in there I, I really didn't know what to do with this one um and um i think like the inspiration for this one came kind of like i just kind of like like wanted to experiment with this kind of pose of the um woman in the picture so that was like okay yeah this this seems interesting let's see where this goes and then you know usually i just start sketching out and see like if there is a, a possibility sometimes the sketches change wildly like they the end results like super different from what i started out with um and sometimes it's pretty much like i already have like a clear idea in my head and i kind of like know where i want this to go and then it's just like i, I managed to bring this to the paper so i think i think like sketches kind of like have their own life as well because sometimes you start with an idea and something completely different comes out and sometimes you just manage to bring exactly that or mostly exactly that to the paper and um yeah and it works and you can you know like um yeah pick it up from there and make it a finished illustration. So um, I'm going to move on to the little plant or leaf. Let's call them leaves. Leaves. Thingies here on the left side while I answer the next question. Um, oh yeah. So um, what I forgot to say about the question before is like sometimes there is like an, a symbolic meaning to um to the things that i use sometimes it's just things that i like so uh, for example this little crown here that's actually inspired by jean michel basquiat if you know the artist um i really like his work and so i just sometimes introduce a crown in there and you know it's also kind of like has this kind of like majestic thing um the circles i just really like circles and symmetric and geometric shapes so that's mostly that and um, yeah, sometimes there's a little bit of like symbolism in there. 
and sometimes it's just composition wise it just looks good and I'm like okay yeah let's let's do that okay so for the leaves I pick the um, pencil tool again and here I have my stroke on and good I checked um, because yeah I'm gonna have to switch this to wide if not I'm not gonna see anything um, and then is it um, while I'm like redrawing this I'm just gonna respond to your other question um, so is it possible to import a pick and put it as filling? Um, so maybe, I'm not quite sure um, what you mean, but um, so what I sometimes do is like I import maybe a part of the illustration as like pill based and then just, you know, leave it there and kind of like bring it in as like a yeah, pixel-based shape, but with like a transparent background, you can definitely do that. You can also like bring in something as a background the way I did for the sketch, maybe in the background. So I can just redraw it or maybe, um, maybe you mean like masking, uh, um, like a part of the, of the picture that you're bringing in. So maybe you're talking like about photos and then like maybe use that part um, but not the rest of it, kind of like to um, like separate it from the background and then bring that in. Is, is that what you mean? So um, yeah, maybe um, I, would, I would love it if you can, if you can let me know if, if I was able to answer your question or not. Um, so here for the leaves, as I, as I announced previously, I, I just redraw them with the, with the pen pen pencil see I always mess those two up it's the pencil tool um, because I want these like super wiggly lines and I don't want them to be too um, perfect all I'm doing is like making them align the lines that I didn't bring together in the beginning um, so so you can see it again um, yeah I'm just pick the pencil tool I have my flow on 98 percent i think that's pretty nice and um yeah i just kind of like freely redraw this and this is what the tool does like it kind of like evens out the messiness of my line it makes it a little bit smoother and all i have to do now is just bring these nodes as close together as i can so it looks nice and clean and intentional. And see here, I have like a little bit of a wobbly part that I, I'm not really a fan of. So I'm just gonna smooth that out a little bit. Looks a bit, doesn't look so natural. So, mm. okay. Um, and then this curve is like super exaggerated. I usually don't have curves like this. So I'm just gonna I'm just going to bring this in and make this like a different kind of messy. Different kind of messy. That's a good band name. Um, all right. So mm, let's just let's delete this one because this is like, I'm not feeling this one. And I just brought it in right, right again. Okay. Yeah. Something like this. Okay. So yeah, I want, I want these leaves to be like a little bit messy and like a little bit wiggly. Um, so this is why I really like the pencil tool for these ones. So I'm just going to do this again with this one. And here I'm actually just going to whoop, see what happens. Yeah, it's, it's actually not bad. I think I can do this. All right. Ooh, here. Having a little bit of a problem to pick up the node. Mm -hmm. I think that's okay. Yeah, I'm just going to rearrange the notes a tiny bit so yeah it looks like yeah, a bit more intentional and not just all too wiggly but yeah again like i really really like the spontaneity of of how this just kind of like how the tool just kind of like creates that itself so i use that um in my um for my advantage yeah that's the that's the expression that i've been looking for all right and then you know i just connected to the stem and 
that's pretty much it. I can change the color as well if I want to. So in my final version, I actually did that. So um, let's do that very quickly in here. Let's add this like gorgeous like pink hue. And this one is actually, I actually used it in fill as well. So I'm gonna do that as well. And I'm gonna keep the outline though, because I want these like more soft, like softened um, points of the illustration. Okay, um, I guess I'm gonna, I guess you know how to make circles, I hope. So I'm not sure if that's like a very like, you know, big learning experience here if I'm gonna redraw them, but you know, just in case. It only takes me actually two minutes, so let's do that. And in the meantime, I can answer more questions because whenever I can do something that is like not so hard to do, then it's easier to respond to some questions. Sometimes you kind of like maybe hear me struggle a little bit when I'm talking, but it's because just like not so good at doing two things at the same time. I try. Okay, so um, yeah, um, how to fill in the form? I really struggle with it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yes, that's actually perfect. I can do that right here. Okay, so I just made a. So the question was how to fill in a form. Okay, so I have a. I have this circle, and I'm just going to copy it here and I scale it and that's a perfect example because um, I just use this um, circle in order to fill in the, um, the shape okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off the stroke here in appearances so if you go into the style tab here with the little brush symbol uh, you go to appearance toggle this little arrow down Oh, no, that was actually not even necessary, see? Um, it's just the Style tab, and you just toggle on Fill instead of Stroke. So, super easy. You can, of course, keep the Stroke as well, and then fill in the shape, and you can change the color, of course, so it will be like seamless if you want that, or if you want to keep the, the little border around it, then, of course, you can change like the color too. For example, oh, I don't know if you can see the distinction. Maybe it's like because of the screening and everything. Maybe it's like a little bit too hard to see. So let me show you with a different color. Um, let's use this um, turquoise color. Um, so yeah, you could of course do that. Um, like keep the, both the stroke or the outline and the fill if you want that. Um, I don't, so I'm just gonna toggle this off. And uh, here for this, I did the same thing for this leaf. So um, I just here in the style tab, like this little uh, brush symbol, I just toggle on or off the fill. So that's that. Or, um, well, this works because this is actually a closed path. So if I have something like Mm, let me think about this. So the lips here, if you remember that. Um, let's just jump into this very quickly. I have to talk along the visibility. So here I had um, like this, this shape wasn't filled out. So what I did here is because I have like a bunch of separate paths, I, I cannot use this function of like just here in the um, style tab to just fill this because well, not much. This was a bad example. Um, but if I use, okay, Vectornator. It's like, ah, here we go. Jump back a little bit too, too quickly. If, if I select this uh, shape and I just want to fill this in, then it's actually good that this is a different color because then you see this is not a closed path. So it's just going to give me like a like a miserable little line there. I would have to close the path in order to have um, the, the entire shape um, filled. So to be honest, I'm too lazy to do that. So what I'm going to do is I select the pencil tool and I click here on fill 
I'm going to do this again in, in, in white so you can see the difference that I'm doing. I'm just going to draw like over the... Okay, this was not in white as I hoped to. But I just drew over the lips. I'm just going to show you now by changing the appearance very quickly. So it's just like a super, super messy shape on top of the lips. But because I'm going to make this shape the same color than the back, than the outline, here it is blue, you can't see it. So I don't have to worry about that. So that's how I do it when I don't have a closed path. I hope that was helpful. Okay, more questions. Great. Um, okay. Okay. Sorry, I just had to quickly read the um, the question completely so I can really understand it. So, Miriam, you're saying that um, yeah. So instead of filling something with blue, um, filling it with a picture, and I think the easiest way to do that is by actually masking that i can try i theoretically know how this could be um, achieved but i think i have to um i have to try this out to be honest so let's just like let's see if i can do that because i'm just like now i'm very curious about this so I'm just going to quickly create a new new layer and I'm going to bring in my finished sketch very quickly. So we have something like a, a basis to work off with, right? I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. Um, and if I put a... So I have this on my new layer, right? And I'm just going to draw, let's say, a circle on top of it. And I'm going to select just both of them and mask yeah that was it and you see so now it's kind of like cropped to just the uh, shape that i drew on top of it by just selecting mask so in case you didn't see actually it shows up here in this like super nifty little um uh, bar of uh, tools you can just here select or deselect mask so if I deselect it again, you can see that here is my circle on top of it. You can see like this faint blue line. So I tap it and then it, it like kind of like removes the rest in the background and just makes it fit to your um, shape you drew on top of it. So of course you can go totally nuts with this shape. And I'm just going to do that just in order to um, make this entirely clear. Having a bit of trouble though to find my circle, so I'm just going to go back. Okay, so I'm just going to kill this circle quickly and I'm just going to pick my trusty uh, pencil tool. And okay, so this is going to be like super rough, but yeah. So I'm, if I just want to, you know, like redraw, like let's say, okay, I want this part, right? So I'm going to make this one shape. And it's important that you close the path here, okay? So with the pen tool, you probably, it's gonna look a little bit better than with this, but I just wanted to show you that, you know, you can do this with all kinds of shapes. Um, it doesn't really matter. So I select again the, um, the image and the path, and then here on the, on the bottom, on this bottom bar, you can't see me gesturing, so sorry. <laughs> um, in the bottom bar, you can see next to the trash can, you can see this little mask symbol. You just click on that and then, you know, it kind of like clips it to this, um, to this shape that I just, like really trashy shape that I just drew, but you know, it, it's making my point, so that's good. And if you don't want to go through this like little bar, um, mask in the bar, you can do it here in style, right? In the style tab, you just scroll down a little bit and then down here, you can next to the group icon, you can also see the mask icon and just tap on that. So, but you know, it's like so neat that you have it like there in the in this bar. All right, I'm just gonna delete this very quickly. I don't know if we still have time. I think it um, 
we're running out of time a little bit. Oh yeah, Miriam, please let me know if that was your question and if that helped you. Um, okay, I'm gonna jump into the last couple of questions, I think. I don't know, let's see what, um, uh, what the director tells me. Um, so, was it hard for you to build your online community as an artist? Um, um, well, it's, you know, it, def it depends what, you know, hard. It's just time intense. I mean, it's it's work like any other work. It's, um, you know, like somebody goes on like, oh, you know, like they're making so and so much money from the YouTube channel or something like that. I wish I could, you know, just like make a video and then upload it and make so much money from it. It's like, yeah, but you know, in order to get there, there had there was a lot of work. Um, so um, I think sometimes we forget that it's, it's also work. You need to put in the, the work, of course, in order to, um, to get where you like to get to a bunch of followers or whatever. Um, but it's fun, you know, you can make it fun because you can make it the way you want to and people are getting into your art and, you know, that's very beautiful. Um, so instead of, well, maybe, may, yeah, maybe, maybe it is hard, but I, I think it's like, it's a, it's like somewhat negative connotated. Um, it's just, it's just time intense, like other things as well. Um, it just takes time and determination, but anyone can succeed if you don't give up, you know? It's like, I see a lot of people sometimes getting disencouraged and then they're like, mm -hmm, I don't wanna do that. And, and you know, they stop posting, but they're like gorgeous, like these super talented, gorgeous artists. And it's just kind of like, oh, this is so sad, you know? Like, I would really love to see more of this from this person, but then, you know, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's constant work. I mean, there is a reason why so many people make money from this, right? Like teaching people how to show up on Instagram or in Twitter or whatever. So yeah, I'm just gonna add like a little bit more of like flowery details, leafy details here. Look, that didn't even like, that was like too much of a, uh, I think these settings here on the left are like way too subtle now for this like size of leaves. So it's just giving me like um, oval shapes or something. So yeah, let's increase that again for the other leaf because this one's gonna be a little bit bigger. Yeah, that's nice. All right. See, I'm just like drawing them and like, I just like them. I just like it when they look a little bit wiggly, so. I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna flip this one because I want ends to meet because again like I'm in, in a sweet mood and I want to I want things to connect today so let's put them all together um, yeah okay that was a little bit yeah no that works it's okay it looks a little bit it's very very wiggly but it's kind of cool I like it. So sometimes I like to add also like little details. What I'm doing right now is just, um, I'm just adding like more details um, to to the face because I, I like to, I like to work like in a, minimal, a minimalist style, um, but then it's really nice to like really show that, you know, you don't do minimalism just because um, you run out of ideas or I don't know. <laughs> um, so by I do that by kind of like adding tons of details, um, but in like certain parts and if they're like well placed and it looks really nice. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, this color is weird. What's happening there? Maybe I'm on the, oh, I think I'm on the wrong layer. That's why. Okay, so yeah, I was on the face layer and I should have been on the, hand layer i guess because i made two hand layers which was of course total stroke of genius from my side um it's so not confusing at all and yeah so i like these like little dots let's see how this looks oh they're going to be right so okay i'm just gonna select them and i'm just gonna scale them all a little bit and then redistribute them a little bit more and see like i still had to copy i keep doing that you know like I, I leave the copy option on ah yeah that's nice i like that okay let's let's add a little drop here too i like drops drops are cool i don't know i really like the shape 
let me know what you think about drops i'm really curious oh because that was on a different layer it's like mm, it's not so great that didn't quite work out so what am i going to do I'm just going to copy this yeah i'm gonna, I'm gonna just copy it and bring it on the right layer and now paste it <clears throat> very good okay so i just copied this same circle really make your life as easy as you can um and you know reuse the shapes that you already have you don't have to redraw everything from scratch that was something that i thought i had to do when i started out like even though i already had drawn like a thousand drops i was like oh you know like for every illustration i have to do it again and again um so you know it looks new and fresh i don't know can anyone tell the difference between a drop that i've drawn like half a year ago or today um so yeah i gave myself some slack and i was like no no i mean i don't you know, if i if i've already drawn it i can just you know draw it again and uh use that again and don't have to draw it again every time I'm, I'm doing this and um yeah it saved myself a lot of time so i'm gonna give her a little bit of like a cool badass detail Ooh, i'm not sure if i should use that word anyway um adding some drops underneath her eye and i'm gonna like add something like i guess those could be lashes you know i could just kind of like like drawing a little bit of something underneath the eye i think it looks really cool and yeah i also want the cap to be round here hmm so uh, didn't quite do what i wanted okay here we go and then you know i can like always do a little bit of adjustment afterwards if i need it so yeah I'm, I'm a sucker for the details so sometimes i get like really really lost in the details and um yeah you just you just stop me with with questions so you know i don't spend like hours and hours on the same details over and over um yeah so oops see now i like actually have like this little knot that i didn't want here but it just appeared sometimes it's like um i've noticed that this um that the screen is like super super sensitive which is great but sometimes i'm like a little bit clumsy and i just you know like have like half my hand in like my illustration and then um i just like you know i tap things with my um with my palm and i know that there are tools for that so i know that there are like these like super looking gloves that people use um so that doesn't happen and yeah i have to confess i just never bought one i guess i could do that so um i actually want her eyebrow to be a little bit thicker she looks like two you know Britney's no I think actually Britney Spears didn't have eyebrows like this but it just looks too much 2000 for me so um I'm just gonna add a little bit more of like eyebrow here and I get another chance to show you how I can fill this shape so because this is an enclosed shape um this eyebrow so I just close the path I can just fill it here and if it's not the right color, I mean, luckily now it is, but yeah, I could just, actually it wasn't, but you can't, probably can't see it because the, like it's, it's like way too sensitive for the screen to pick up. Um, so yeah, since this is an enclosed shape, I can, I can just, you know, fill it in. If it weren't, um, then I would just quickly draw over it with a pencil tool and then probably like merge them together using a Boolean function or something. Um, but it was, so yay for that. Um, it was easier than I thought. And um, sometimes I also like to add like a little bit of uh, like 
separate hairs, let's say. No? See? Just like sometimes they look also like really angry when I do that. So sometimes I just skip them. It's really an experience thing. So but I think it's kind of nice. I mean she already looks a little bit like badass vibe anyway, so what's the harm? Okay, and um, yeah, because I drew this on one side and I don't have it on the other one, I just, oops, I just click it while having copy activated, then I deactivate copy on my left side, so this is where you, you know, pay attention quickly. Oh, it's actually duplicate mode. See, I learn something every day. Um, and then I just increase the stroke that I did not want. Um, so I'm just going to go back because... Um, I'm just going to copy it again. Copy it. Hold one finger down to move it in a horizontal line. And then up here in my style tab, uh, there is like pretty much on the top, there is the um, flip horizontally tool. I just do that. I deselect copy on my light left side and I just place it on top of the eyebrow that is underneath. So. If I'm lucky, I can actually get this eyebrow underneath. No, I guess I can't. Okay, so I just moved the one on top a little bit up so I can delete the one underneath because, you know, it's just going to bother me forever if I don't do that. I probably can't sleep tonight, so. Okay, yeah, um, she, I think she needs like a little more of an arm here, right? I mean, this is like very flat, so let's just give her a little bit of like some definition here so she actually does have an arm something like that and you know like this i don't know this upsets me so i know this is like super tiny but like i don't know if you could see this but there's like this little bump here and this is just like this uh, if I'm really trying to leave this stuff so you really get to see the good stuff but it's just like yeah it's it's just gonna keep me up at night if I'm if I'm gonna leave this so I fixed it um because there was like this little awful little bezier that was like misplaced and I just double tapped it see and now it won't let me do this so mean okay now double tapped and now it's gone it's like I won't suffer tonight <laughs> okay and I'm just gonna add like a so cute more like leafy shapes here. Uh, something like this. And um, see, this is also gonna bother me. So like, oh my God, why? Why do you do this? It's just like these like, tiny little like, oh. I mean, it's a quick fix, you know? Like these tiny little things that just, feel like totally out of sorts and out of place it's like oh so hard to leave them okay um i'm gonna add like some some cool little dots over here as well so i'm just gonna copy the ones from i already have over here i'm just gonna drag them in position i actually did something a little bit different in, in like my first version i had um so yeah this is okay you know i can just totally Go with the flow this time as well and see what happens so i don't like the placement of these they're like a little bit too far apart so i'm just going to bring them a little bit closer together and a little bit more to the edge yeah but okay come so let me select this yeah okay yeah here we go all right um well i can of course like do also this circle quickly up here um but i guess i'm like we're pretty much like reaching an end because you saw me do pretty much everything um so if you have any more questions uh pop them in now and i'm just gonna you know do these like little circles here in the meantime seeing if you have any questions and um if not, I really, really hope that you learned a lot. Um, you can also tell me what was the thing that you liked seeing the most. That's always super, super helpful feedback for me. And for Vectornator, of course, too. So um, 
yeah um i hope you learned a lot i hope you got really really inspired to do your own creations i would love to see them by the way you know like if you feel like do something like i don't know tag me send me dm something like that that would be awesome um so i'm just gonna you know have some fun over here with my circles if you have questions about the circle tool feel free to ask but i just you know like sometimes i'm like not really sure like what could be interesting <laughs> because sometimes i'm just like super used to doing this already so i'm like yeah I'm, you know like this is you know is this interesting is it not i don't know um so yeah um yeah thank you so much miriam so sweet you were super active today this is super super lovely i'm so happy that you um that you asked so many questions and that you were super engaged thank you so much for that this is always like such a big um game changer you know like it's so cool to have like people there who are like yeah this is i'm interested in this i ask all the questions that i have because you know i'm just sitting here you know like talking to my phone and it can be super weird so i'm so 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 glad that um yeah you engage with us properly um i'm just gonna toggle this down to more of a transparency and i actually messed up you know like I, I put this on the wrong layer but it's fine you know it's just like i can i can make a new layer so um what i'm doing here is again like i'm, I'm just gonna like add some more nodes so i can just delete the parts that i don't want because if you uh check out the sketch underneath it i'm just gonna show you quickly um see you see that i like broke up these little circles um so what i'm doing is like i i just made a bunch of circles and i'm just gonna break them up into like little parts to have like this I guess this is the saucer that was actually like originally the idea of this um drawing um that this like circle element i don't really know what it is it was just like yeah this is just this is gonna be the saucer that's fine you know that's that's gonna work um <laughs> okay um so more questions um are my illustrations used for any products or something? Yes, yes, they are. So I have um, I have a bunch of like licensed illustrations. Uh, for example, you can find them on pillowcases. I don't know if you know pillowcases. They make compostable um, phone cases. So cool. Um, so yeah, um, on that, for example, then, you know, there are also books with my illustrations on the cover. Um, what else? Um, so it's like going to have to gather together everything that I did sometimes I'm just drawing a blank um but yeah definitely so they are found on on um sometimes uh like licensed illustrations like the illustrations that I already made um that I license to companies and then we use them on the products or sometimes I create illustrations for companies based on their specifics so I do both of it and um yeah um if I can think of more I'm, I'm just gonna throw them in so yeah um so let's style inspiration okay so somebody's asking about the style inspiration yes thank you so much for this question um oh this is actually so it's really not a generic question okay i mean yes i hear it a lot but it's a very complex um response honestly so because the style is like such a personal thing um and I also see like a lot of people like paying so much attention to the style and I think if you're like just starting out then you know just do whatever the I, I shouldn't swear so I was just holding myself back there um <laughs> just do whatever you want just whatever you feel inspired to do and you know don't overthink it too much um and um and then you know I, I'm very sure that the style is going to emerge eventually so this is how it was for me you know like I was like so I wanted to have my style and you know i wanted it to be perfect and then you know i was just holding myself back with that and then yeah, i just i just kept observing work of other artists that i liked and sometimes i just you know copied something of them and yes i know this is like a huge oh my god copying someone else's art i didn't say like i was copying it and then you know i said that it was mine i just copied it for the purposes of kind of like studying it and understanding how they did it and then from there it like led me to uh, a new idea of how I could do something for something that was like my interest 
um, or how I could kind of like incorporate that into my let's say like so style wise I liked something but it wasn't like the content that I liked so I just you know kind of like got the inspiration style wise from there and then I just brought it into and applied it to something that would content wise interest me so um, I did a lot of that um, and I also tried to find like um, common components in artists or in the work that I liked. So if you kind of like, what was very helpful for me was like the bigger of an amount of, um, of artwork that I had from other people and also my own, of course, but the more like I had an idea of what I liked, um, I kind of like, so I, I did this on Pinterest. I have like, I have like this huge Pinterest board. Um, and the more I looked at it and the more stuff was on there, the more I realized like, hey, there, is, there are patterns in here. So um, I used those patterns to kind of like determine what, um, what I like, like style-wise and content-wise. So I realized, for example, there was a lot of um, minimalist stuff, like just line work, you know, very like what people would say, maybe it's like, a, simple but you know it's like it's yeah it's very minimalistic um so i realized like oh hey i i think i'm i'm like i like i like minimalism then um and that um and then i started like searching for um illustration with the with the keyword uh, minimalism and then i was like oh yeah this is, this is really cool or like something a little bit more i don't know a little bit more specific uh for example like japanese graphic design or japanese um a new illustration maybe not so much but yeah so nordic graphic design also has like this beautiful beautiful like geometric shapes and things and it's like super minimalistic and still like kind of like messy so um yeah like once i started seeing like patterns emerge i just started to look that those up and see like okay what do i like about um about this and um, just go from there. And then I started saving more and more. And then I realized like, okay, maybe there's like a bunch of women always in the illustrations and well, I usually draw women. And yeah, I hope um, you understand what I mean by that. So it just kind of like emerged from, um, from kind of like collecting art or like pinning it somewhere um, where it was everything like on the same, um, uh, board or something yeah Pinterest is really really helpful for that so I totally recommend um, having a Pinterest board that's like mine is called illustration inspiration it's like for yeah super creative right um, and I just throw everything on there like everything that I like is just like okay yeah this is my illustration inspiration and whenever I feel like mm, I don't really know what to draw um, I can just go back there and um, and see what other people drew and then maybe it's just a pose or something that I that I like and I'm just gonna go and take it from there okay um so the last question is is there any gesture to keep symmetry and angles when copying shapes so I'm not sure if you mean that if by copying um, a shape that I can like uh, move it in the same line like vertically or horizontally or in a 45 degree angle if so then um, I can just show you very quickly how I do that I hope this is what you meant um, so you know I just I just select quickly this leaf here and uh, I'm just gonna copy it for the for the purpose of yeah so I can select it and move it and hold one finger down so it moves on like horizontally or also vertically and it even works with a 45 degree angle so just by holding down one one finger like at least i have like you know the symmetrical um i can achieve a certain symmetry from that um i don't know if you maybe mean that this function that you have in procreate where you can just toggle on symmetry and you can just draw on one side and then it automatically um, mirrors it to the other side if this exists then i would really want to know <laughs> i haven't found it yet um so um i don't know let's uh let's tell this to the very kind people at vectornator um that um that we want the symmetry function 
where you can just you know vectorize something and it automatically like switches to the others uh, like kind of like copies it to the other side that would be awesome um so yeah um i think i i was able to answer your question so i'm glad thank you um and um yeah so i guess i'm just gonna add my last little thing that's going to be the background in blue fill and i can toggle off now i actually don't really need to toggle it off so yeah here we are um this is what we did today i hope you enjoyed it thank you so so much um okay oh yeah i see this last little uh, input from chastie thank you so much um oh thank you so much thank you so much for watching and yes cool yes sign up for pinterest please she just said she's going to sign up for pinterest yes do that because this is such a great tool for inspiration and everything and it's totally okay to you know look at a bunch of um artwork from other people really um yeah um just do that learn a lot from other people because this is how it used to be in the past um people learn from other artists and by that like grew their own expertise and there's no reason why it shouldn't be like that today so thanks everybody for watching yeah i'm not going to keep you any longer i'm super super happy you all joined me and um if you have further questions hey look me up on instagram i'm super happy to answer all your questions it's sandra.staub so that's how you write it it's s-t-a-u-b um but yeah you pronounce it staub so you know it's german um so yeah Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this and I really, really hope we see each other next time. So thanks also to Vectornator. Make sure you follow them also for super cool tutorials on Vectornator because it's, yeah, it's always like just super, super helpful. And um, yeah, thanks so much and have a lovely evening. Bye.